Hello, everybody. Kareen Smith here again with an edition of Study in Thoreau, a series in which I talk about resources that you can use to study the life and writings of American author and naturalist Henry David Thoreau. This is the seventh episode, and we're going to be talking about collections of essays today. Okay. Again, I give you resources, not interpretation. I leave that up to you. So we're talking about essays today, and the first question to ponder here is, what should we even consider to be an essay? I'll let you think about that for a minute. As I said, my name is Kareen Smith. I worked for, as a librarian for a long time. Uh, I've been a fan of Henry David Thoreau since the 70s, so books Thoreau makes sense. I've done a lot of research on my own about him in the last 20 years, written a couple of books, Westward I Go Free, Tracing Thoreau's Last Journey, and Henry David Thoreau for Kids, His Life and Ideas with 21 Activities. <clears throat> Currently, I serve as the supervisor of the Thoreau Society shop at Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts. This is my own series. It's my own perspective of the history of these publications and their scope. It's not an endorsement by the Thoreau Society. <clears throat> but of course, if we sell the books at the shop, then we've made a conscious decision to do that. And all the books, as usual, that I mentioned on here are on my website, travelswiththoreau.com. You go to the bibliography then, bibliography tab, and there you will find listings of all the books that I mentioned today, along with links to find them somewhere, either the shop at Walden Pond or bookshop.org or used.adol.com, which is the aggregate bookseller that site that I use to find used and out of print books. Okay, today our topic is Thoreau's essays and collections of them. So quick, in the next 18 seconds, name four of them. Da, na, 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 na. Civil disobedience. Da, na, 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 na. Na, na, na. Walking. Da, na, 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 na. Slavery in Massachusetts. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Autumnal tints. Did you get four? Did you at least get civil disobedience? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Or more accurately, resistance to civil government, because that's the way Henry titled it. This exercise was just to get you thinking about his essays, because usually we think about Thoreau and think about his writings. What do you think of first? Walden and the journal or the journal and Walden. Civil disobedience probably comes in third, probably with that title. But beyond that, sometimes it takes even us veterans a little bit longer to think of some more titles. And maybe you think of his essays as things that came afterward anyway, when in many instances, chronologically, they came before, ho ho. Well, anyway, before we launch into the essays and where to find them. Let's first address the format and my initial question, which is what should we consider to be an essay? To answer this question, I consulted my trusty Webster's New World Dictionary of the American Language, which my Aunt Bert thoughtfully gave to me when I went away to college in 1975. Thank you, Aunt Bert. And aside to my fellow librarians, no, it's not a real Webster's because they are published by the Merriam-Webster Company of Springfield, Massachusetts. There's your tidbit for the day. But you know, <clears throat> Aunt Bert didn't know the difference. And this dictionary has served me very well in the decades since. So lesson learned, we don't always have to have the best. Anyway, my dictionary defines an essay as a short literary composition of an analytical or interpretive kind, dealing with its subject usually from a personal point of view or in a limited way. Makes sense. And yet this is the second definition of the word when you use it as a noun. The first one is also related to pronunciation and the word used as a verb as in essay meaning to test or to try or even to weigh or assess something. You know, 
Henry loved wordplay and he liked to use words that could have different meanings like this under different circumstances. And then he would write a sentence that could be interpreted in either direction, often completely opposite. When he appreciate the great analogy that we can make here because many of his writings started out as public lectures, as essays where he could measure or assay the reaction of the audience before he had to submit it to uh, an editor or a publisher. He could try it out on real people. He could test the language to see, to see how it flowed. It, it's a perfect connection. Essay, essay. In fact, when thinking about his books, you know, A Week on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers, Walden, Maine Woods, Cape Cod, Yankee in Canada. The only one that he didn't try out on an audience first was a week, really. All of the rest, he had some uh, lectures that he tried out on people and then they became essays and then they became books, okay? The separate essays became chapters in those books and some of them appeared in the periodicals of the day. You know, even when you think of Walden, which he did, he did do a couple of the beginning chapters as lectures. All of the chapters really could be seen as standalone essays. They have their own titles. They have their own specific subjects. So let's make things easier right up front. And let's agree that a week Walden, Maine Woods, Cape Cod and Yankee in Canada are books, books, okay? We're not gonna consider them to be essays. And I already talked about these books in other episodes. Some of them will show up again <laughs> rather quickly. Now, as I started working on this piece, I gathered together uh, first the essay books that I own, and then I got others and I researched the history of it. I ended up with 18 different books, <clears throat> 18 different compilations of Thoreau's essays throughout the years. And I got overwhelmed with which books had which essays in them, as you probably would too. So I decided to do the librarian organizational thing and make spreadsheets. <laughs> How insane is this? So what I did, <laughs> I mean, really, what I did is I picked 30 of the most familiar and most popular essays, okay? If they had title changes like civil disobedience, resistance to civil government, I note that in the, in the side here. 30 different essays, and then the top column is, which books are they in? <laughs> is that insane or what? And the first couple of columns are different. One is whether or not the essay started out as a lecture. The next column is where it appeared early, if it appeared in a publication during his lifetime, especially. Okay, and so this is a 10 page PDF, <laughs> a 10 page PDF, including bibliographic citations of each one of the 18 books. And this masterful spreadsheet, in case you want to look at it, is at travelswiththero.com slash essays.pdf. Okay. <clears throat> I decided to do it that way. I decided not to read you the tables of contents of 18 different books. I'm just gonna tell you in my little survey here what the differences between the books are. So as far as early publications go in Thoreau's lifetime, you know, seven of his essays appeared in The Dial in the early 1840s. Five others he had published in other magazines during his lifetime. And then five others were printed in the Atlantic Monthly in the years just after he was gone, okay? That's all listed in these. And so there's 30 main essays that I came up with. And you probably never would have thought of 30, could you? But once you start looking, then you say, oh yeah, I remember seeing that some other place, okay, yeah. Now remember again, we're talking about standalone essays here. I am not considering the ones that became Maine Woods, Cape Cod, or Yankee in Canada. Those are books. Those are books. We already talked about them. Now, 
another reason why it is so confusing to compare compilations of essays, essay collection books with one another, other than the fact that what's in them is the arrangement of the titles themselves. Because it is a tradition not to bring you essays in alphabetical order by title. Oh no, <laughs> that would be too easy. They're never in alphabetical order. What order are they in instead then? Chronological. Chronological of when they came out during Henry's lifetime and after. <laughs> Chronologically, not alphabetical. <sighs> so what's gonna happen is when you pick up almost any book, including any book of excursions, First one that's gonna come up is Natural History of Massachusetts because that was printed in the dial in July of 1842, one of his first more popular and major publications. Natural History of Massachusetts is in 11 of these 18 books. So that's, that's tricky. And that's again, why I made the spreadsheet because comparing one to another, especially when the titles are not in alphabetical order, in mine they are. <laughs> What a concept. <laughs> anyway, what did Henry write in these essays? Well, you know, we could put the subjects into very general categories. Nature and travel, social reforms and rights, and others. And you can probably tell what's in each one. In addition to nature, um, natural history of Massachusetts in the nature category, we would have walking wild apples, walk to Wachusett, that's nature and travel, autumnal tints things like that. Social reforms and rights, civil disobedience, more rightly called resistance to civil government. Remember, a publisher came up with that name, not Henry. He never coined that phrase. And now he's become the poster child for it. Go back to my others video to watch my talk about that. <clears throat> so civil disobedience, we also have slavery in Massachusetts, life without principle, and the three John Brown essays. There are three. The others, cover more literary topic, topics often, you know, Thoreau wrote about Sir Walter Raleigh, wrote Thomas Carlyle on his works when he was into the English poets, stuff like that. So now, <clears throat> if you are in the market to find a book of Thoreau's essays, you first have to ask yourself, what do you want? Do you want to get as many of these essays as possible, all in one book? Should you read every little thing that Henry David Thoreau ever wrote? You know, even if you're a devoted fan, you don't have to, okay? I'm giving you permission. You do not have to read every word that came out of his and okay? So for these essays, would you rather focus on nature and travel? Would you rather focus on social reform and rights? <clears throat> All of these are valid. Or would you like a combined selection of both of those with the others thrown in? What do you want? And then you may end up getting multiple books in the end, like I have, and <coughs> you may have already because these guys overlap. But one bottom line here is that if I were your teacher in Thoreauvian studies, and who knows, maybe I am to some extent, I would require you to read at least three of his essays. Can you guess what they are? Civil disobedience, resistance to civil government, walking and one of the John Brown essays. That is the bare minimum, okay? Because all three of those are representative of, you know, the different aspects of Henry and, and his different interests and, and him. Everything else is up to your own preference. Now, in my study of these 18 books, the very first six are either ones that I've talked about before or they're in sets that I've talked about before. So this first part should go quickly. We're gonna go historical here and then by groups. First one that came out was Excursions in 1863. This is obviously my 1960s version of Excursions. So this is just a stand in for that older book, which I could not get from a library. Excursions in 1863, you know, Henry had died. Excursions was the first book after. Excursions almost always includes nine essays with 
Emerson's biography of Henry, which started out as his eulogy at the memorial service and then became an essay in the August 1862 issue of the Atlantic Monthly. You can find it online. So excursions came first, nine essays. And then a Yankee in Canada with anti-slavery and reform papers came out in 1866. I showed you a copy of this in one of the other in the other videos. I returned it to the library. Can't show it to you again. Um, but that includes nine essays plus Yankee in Canada. And that is the instance, 1866, when civil disobedience shows up instead of resistance to civil government. And it was not Henry's decision, at least not as far as we know. Okay. Excursions which is more nature and travel. Yankee in Canada with anti-slavery and reform papers combined two disparate things there, but eventually that gets work, worked out. 1893, Houghton Mifflin does that 11 volume set I've talked about before where four seasonal volumes of the journal appear. Uh, Frank Sanborn's Familiar Letters is the 11th volume and the first couple of volumes are a week, Walden, da 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 da. Well, in that series, in that in that uh, set, volume nine, after the seasonal volumes, volume nine is excursions again, and this one, this library copy got rebound. They really look like this. Okay, 1893, excursions is volume nine, nine, same thing as excursions before nine uh, essays plus Yankee in Canada, except with two unique extras. At the bottom of the table of contents, again, things go in, in uh, order of, <laughs> in the order of chronological order. Actually, this one puts Yankee in Canada first and then natural history of Massachusetts and the rest in chronological order. But it also includes, Two things you're never going to find in another book, May Days and Days and Nights in Concord. What are these? I can tell you right now, they're not on my list of 30. May Days and Days and Nights in Concord are both journal compilations. May Days, excerpts from May in his journal. Days and Nights in Concord, excerpts from Augusts and Septembers. Yes. So you're never going to find that. So th those are not unique. All they are are journal entries. In addition to the four seasonal volumes, the, the 11 volume set was journal heavy, shall we say. And then volume 10 in that set was miscellanies. And they use that name a lot. We have excursions and we have miscellanies. 11 essays in here, plus two translations and two poems. All right. So excursions, miscellanies in the 11 volume set in 1893. And then we come to the big one. And you know what I'm going to say, don't you? <laughs> if you watch these long enough, 1906, what happens in 1906? Houghton Mifflin, 20 volume set, the writings of Henry David Thoreau. Last 14 are the journal, the beginnings, a week, Walden, yada, da, da, da. Okay. Two volumes in that set have essays. Volume four is Cape Cod and miscellanies, miscellanies. And so there are 11, 11 essays in here plus Cape Cod, <clears throat> which we're considering to be a book, remember? And then volume five is excursions and poems. Poems are starting to weave their way in here. So this is nine essays, the same as all excursions, plus Yankee in Canada that's made the switch, plus two translations and more than 22 poems. And I do believe these are one of the uh, original bindings of these. Thank you again to Merrick Public Library in Brookfield, Mass. That thoughtfully has the whole 1906 set and allows it to circulate. <gasps> I hope somebody near you does that too. If you don't own your own 1906 set. Now, that's the historic Chronologi chronological order of these of these essay books. 
We're going to go by groups now. In the first episode, I talked about assembling a basic Thoreau research library, and I recommended getting one of the portables because it's a, a literary smorgasbord of everything. And this is the one I usually use from the 60s, uh, edited by Carl Bodie, Thoreau scholar from the mid 1900s. You can also get the portable Thoreau newer edition compiled by Jeffrey S. Kramer of the Thoreau Institute. And both are published by Penguin. This one actually came out in the 40s, but this is my 1960s copy. And both actually have all of Walden in them. Both actually have the same six essays in them, three nature, three social reform, something for everybody. But then after that, the editors divert on, on what they consider to be important. And, and so, okay, so they have the, the same six. So six, that's not all that many. In the past, I've also recommended Dover books. So here's Dover's answer to an essay book for Henry, Civil Disobedience and Other Essays. Guess what their focus is? Of course, four social reform essays plus one nature. And what's the one nature essay in here? Walking. Really, have you read Walking? If you have not, please hit stop now and go do it. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm not, I'm not joking around. You have to read Walking. I mean, <clears throat> in wildness is the preservation of the world. And it's wildness, not wilderness. People misquote it all the time. If you see it misquoted, correct the person or the place immediately. Wildness and wilderness are two separate and different concepts entirely. In fact, there's a paper for you to write. Wildness, wilderness, explain. Really, go read walking. This brings us <clears throat> now to the Princeton editions. Now, you know, in the past, I don't always recommend the Princeton editions, although I did in correspondence. So the, here are Princeton editions. Now, the Princeton editions, again, <clears throat> go back to Henry's original drafts, his original manuscripts, and uh, print them exactly with the exact punctuation that he did, the no editorial or not much editorial stuff. <clears throat> Princeton Editions uses three volumes. I've got an extra one tucked in there. Three volumes to do essays. The first one is Excursions. I've shown you this before. This includes all of the usual ones plus Yankee in Canada. Uh, but it is missing Night and Moonlight, which usually appears in other Excursion volumes. The other one, if we're going, that's Nature and Travel, Social Reform, we got reform papers in hardback, but when they brought it out in paperback, they called it the higher law. Okay, exact same, exact same book, exact same book, um, just, you know, hardback, paperback. And here we have resistance to civil government because that's the name that Henry gave it and the three John Brown essays and the others that you would expect in reform papers. And then there's a third volume called Early Essays and Miscellanies. This one actually contains 53 essays. What? That's 23 more than I even have on my spreadsheet. I got 30, they got 53. And this is in addition to excursions and reform papers? What is this? Well, I didn't want to clutter up my grid with essays that only appear in one single book. And what this is are early writings, obviously, of Henry. And they took them from 1828 to 1852. So this is while he's in school, while he's in Harvard, before he wrote a journal, that kind of thing. So it's stuff that you've probably never heard of before and stuff that you've probably would not get except in maybe some really specific publications of the 60s and 70s. 
I'm talking 1960s and 1970s. So if you are devoted and you want everything, this may be one of the only places where you can get that, that compilation. So this might be of interest to some of you. All right, now we're heading toward a bottom line, of course, and it, it's time to talk about the Library of America. I have not yet in any of these episodes talked about the Library of America. Library of America books usually look like this in hardback. And they probably have hundreds of writers and important people in their series now. Uh, for Henry, they have two Thoreau books. Okay, these are our nice hardbacks. They usually average 40 to $45. This one's 40. And there are two for Henry, I said. The other one has the 1856 daguerreotype of him on the cover. And it includes a week, Walden, uh, Maine Woods, Cape Cod, all in one text, four books, all in one. This one is the second additional volume that they came up with, and it is collected essays and poems. Has 26 essays in it. This is the most you can get uh, away from that early essays book from Princeton. This is the most you can get in one book, 26 essays plus Yankee in Canada, which is really a book, plus 203 poems. Whoa. How about that? So that's interesting. That's like I said, that's the most, most you can get all in one. And they thoughtfully decided, well, maybe the average student can't pay $40 for this. So they actually came out with a college edition paperback that merges both of those hardbacks, sort of. And this one has Walden, the Maine Woods, not Cape Cod or a week, and all of collected essays and poems in it. So you get Walden, Maine Woods, 26 essays, plus Yankee in Canada, plus the 200 poems. You know, this one beats out the portables for how much it offers at a pretty decent price. This is $17.95. So I'm really sorry that I didn't investigate this and recommend it to you in the basic the row library um, episode. Uh, if I ever re-record that one, I, I probably would include this. This is actually a pretty good deal. My only grouse with these Library of America books, and uh, you might have thought that I would have a grouse. Hey, hey, I'm from Pennsylvania. I can have a grouse. <laughs> That's a state bird joke and a pretty bad one at that. Anyway, I, I get annoyed at these editors who put Yankee in Canada in an essay book. It's not an essay. It's five essays. So in the, in the table of contents here, they only have Yankee in Canada listed once. And it comes after walking. Like, it's just one other thing. If I had been the editor, no, they didn't ask me. If I had been the editor, I would have listed it somewhere special and then had the five titles of the chapters underneath. But they didn't, they treat it just like a, a, a random essay, like, nah, nah, nah. oh, I'm working on a new annotated edition of Yankee in Canada. So I hope to resolve all this. Is it an essay? Is it a book series? Anyway, those two volumes are the most complete place where you can get the most essays for your dollar. Okay. But before you go out, and order them or find them somewhere else, I'd like to recommend three other independent books. And the first one is Lewis Hyde's The Essays of Henry D. Thoreau. Looks nice, feels nice. It's a really nice collection, has 12 essays in it. When Lewis Hyde was a college professor, he wanted to get an essay volume for his students. And he searched around, he couldn't find one that had everything in it that he wanted. So he compiled his own. Why not? You can do that too. They're all in public domain. If you want to put together your own collection of Henry's essays, go to it. Um, so it's 12 essays, the more familiar ones, smatterings of both, um, but also the Katahdin chapter from the Maine Woods. 
which if you remember, I recommended that you read, even if you don't read all of Maine Woods, you have to read Katahdin. That's another you have to read thing. And that's just a really nice format. Another one that I use a lot is William Rossi's Wild Apples and Other Natural History Essays. Um, this one also is kind of nice, does kind of um, overlap a little bit, but of course this is only the natural history essays. So no civil dis here, not even resistance here. Um, so it's aimed at those of us who are nature oriented. It has only eight essays, um, but those are the two that I use in addition to the portable that I have. Um, those are the ones that I use most often myself. I also want to recommend Jeff Kramer's Thoreau's Essays, a fully annotated edition. Now, of course, the Princeton editions always have notes in the end and everything. But of course, an annotated edition means the full text is in the middle and the references explained are in the margins. And Jeff has 15 essays in this one. So this one beats out the portables and uh, Dover and uh, you know even excursion volumes. This has 15 in it, okay? Um, it's really the only annotated essay version out there. Are we done? <laughs> Almost almost because you will also find i can grab them here small individual paperbacks of the popular essays okay now those are compilations and those are all on my masterful spreadsheet of 30 main and we're talking major not the state of maine with an e on the end 30 main essays and where they are in all of those, okay? But you will also find standalone books of the popular essays. There's Walking, there's Civil Disobedience and Wild Apples and Autumnal Tints and even Winter Walks. And you will find these, especially Walking and Civil Disobedience and probably Autumnal Tints in all kinds of different formats, paperback, hardback, if you troll around used book uh, stores or book dealer sites, you'll find uh, a number of these. So it's kind of cool to have to have it all in one, you know. And then if you're inspired, especially if it's a nature one, or even if it's a social reform one, you can take it with you for inspiration in your backpack. And when you do that, you may also come upon something called Friendship by Thoreau. Huh, what is this? Friendship does not appear in any of these other books, none. But you can find copies of this out there, especially if you send, if you uh, set up an online alert for eBay or for used book dealer. If you just put Thoreau, um, you're going to come up with some of these little friendship books. So what is this? Skinny? It, is, it says friendship, Thoreau. What is this? Is it an essay? Is it a book? OK. Corrine didn't talk about this in the other books episode. No, she did not. So what's the scoop here? Well, when you find one of these little friendship books, odds are good that it came from the early 1900s. And many of them were published by Bars and Hopkins of New York. You see that? Bars and Hopkins of New York. And they come in all kinds of different sizes and styles and, and usually more elegant than the one that I found at a used book dealer. Um, and another Thoreau scholar is in the midst of researching this whole friendship phenomenon in detail. And so I don't want to steal his material or step on his toes. But here is my understanding of the basic facts. In the early part of the 20th century, the 1900s, for some reason, the topic of friendship was exceedingly popular in publications. I don't know why all of a sudden everybody was was attracted to the concept of friendship. It's, it's nice, it's a nice trend, but you can find all kinds of compilations that the publishers did of 
grabbing essays from all kinds of different authors on the topic and having compilations of friendship or doing little volumes of, you know, of friendship. Why? I don't know, but they just kept on coming. Now think about this. At the same time, Henry's, Henry David Thoreau's writing reputation was gaining ground. We got the 1893 11 volume set. We got the 1906 20 volume set. And that's around the time that these little friendship by Thoreau books start coming out. So I think someone in the publishing industry, maybe somebody with a connection to Barson Hopkins, picked up one of the first books or the first books from one of those Thoreau sets and read through at least half of that first book. And a light went on and they thought, hey, we can pull this out of here and we can publish it because friendship is really part of the Wednesday chapter of a week on the Concord and Merrimack rivers. <laughs> so yes, Henry wrote it, but someone else more than 50 late years later pulled it out of a week and published it in a standalone format. So we're going in the opposite direction here. Instead of essays becoming a book, a book <laughs> is a chunk is taken out of a week on the Concord and Merrimack rivers and made into friendship. These little books rarely contain any information about Thoreau. These little books almost always do not tell you that it comes from the Wednesday chapter of a week. So that's why it can be confusing. Friendship, what is this? I've never heard of this essay. Well, it's because it was a book first, okay? And this is why none of these publishers do anything with this. They, not, they don't consider this a separate standalone essay. It's part of a week. If they've already given you a week, they've already given you this, okay? If you already have a favorite copy of a week, obviously this is mine, then you don't need a copy of Friendship, at least not for yourself. It might make a nice present for someone else though. Keep that in mind. So I wanna remind you that my spreadsheet can be found at travelswiththoreau.com and then put slash essays.pdf after it. 30 essays, what books they're in, in case you really want to find Sir Walter Raleigh, then you're probably going to want to do the Library of America books because usually Sir Walter Raleigh doesn't appear in too many others. That's just an example. I do have Friendship on the list as the 31st one. Uh, just to continue the um, continue the explanation that it comes from Wednesday in a week. So, okay, so 30 main essays really, and Henry wrote two books and published two books in his lifetime, you know, others later, but but basically during his lifetime, 30 main essays, two books, you know, for somebody that we consider to be a great writer, maybe that's not a lot. Well, yeah, maybe 30 essays, two books may not seem like a lot. But, and you knew a but was coming. Please consider this. Henry David Thoreau lived only to the age of 44. He had about 25 good writing years, we can say, from 1837 when he graduated from Harvard until he died in 1862. During that same time, what else did he do? Well, first of all, he kept a journal. And for the last dozen years, he wrote in it almost every day, often at length. And eventually this amassed to two million words, two million words. He made his own walkabout around Southern New England as a young man, traveled to Maine three times, traveled to Cape Cod four times, climbed Mount Monadnock four times, Mount Wachusa twice, climbed Mount Katahdin and Mount Greylock once each, hiked up numerous other hills and mountains in throughout New England. And he wrote about these experiences. 
He often paddled along the rivers of his hometown, the Concord, the Assabet, and the Sudbury. In his last four years, he did this quite a lot. In fact, for one whole year, he studied the river system and the watershed tremendously, made all kinds of remarkable discoveries. And in his, in, in his time, he spent more time on the water than he did in the woods. He always was doing botanical field work for his own purposes, almost every day. He kept an herbarium, a plant library of all the known plants that grew in Concord, kept meticulous statistics on when things bloomed, how seeds proliferated, how trees succeeded. He worked in and helped to manage the family pencil and graphite business for a number of years. He taught himself surveying and did surveying work for pay, resulting in the completion of at least 165 property surveys, which included not only going out into the landscape and making all the, all the you know, measurements, but coming back and writing the descriptions and the details and drawing the map and making it all make sense. He gave about 75 public lectures. Many of them were essays that became essays or books. And even on his deathbed, he was working on firming up pieces for publication. And that's why we have excursions, Maine Woods, Cape Cod, and Yankee in Canada. And that's how the Atlantic Monthly got five additional essays to print after he was gone. And they were Walking, Autumnal Tints, Wild Apples, Life Without Principle, and Night and Moonlight. And all the while, off and on, Henry was suffering from an infectious respiratory disease. An infectious respiratory disease. So our lament should not be, gee, Henry died so young, how much more could he have written or done if he only had a few more years? No, our reaction should be, OMG, HDT, how did you ever do it all? How did, how did you do all of that stuff in the, a condensed time period? You astonish us and we're still talking about you. Um, we are forever grateful for all that you have given us and we keep reading and writing and studying and talking about your amazing work. So thank you, Henry. Thank you for all that you have done. <sighs> thank you, Henry. So all the books that I've mentioned are in travelswiththero.com. I hope what I've talked about uh, helps and that you know now what you'd like to find in collections of essays and you know where to get them. Use my spreadsheet if you'd like or not. 18 books, all kinds of different things. So, right, uh, my next topic I think will be Thoreau's poetry because that's the only part of his writing that we haven't gotten around to yet. Did you know that Henry wrote poetry? Besides the fact that I mentioned some of these books have poems in them. Most people don't know that he was a poet. Was he any good at it? Again, I leave the interpretation up to you. So that concludes this episode of Studying Thoreau in uh, Feel free to ring the bell up at the top if you want to get alerts, uh, put a thumbs up if this was helpful, or subscribe if you'd like, uh, and post comments. Uh, I often, uh, I read them and I often reply to them. And so um, till next time then, I'm Kareen Smith. Take care, everybody. <laughs>